Hello everybody and welcome back. Today I'm going to be retesting a bunch of products I disliked. I filmed a couple of these in the past and there's always one or two products that get redeemed. One product that comes straight to mind is the Milk Makeup Cream Highlighter in the shade Lit. That's one of my favorite cream highlighters now. So I'm curious to see if there's going to be a similar situation in today's video. Although this video might have a negative connotation to it, I feel like it's always good to give products another shot. And I think these videos are quite entertaining as well. So before we get into it, I'd love for you to subscribe if you haven't already. And let's get to it. So for my primer today, I'm going to be going in with the NYX the Marshmallow Primer. Now, looking at this, it's not a very bad product or anything like that. I just found that it didn't really live up to its claims and I just felt like a moisturizer to me. And I'd rather go in with like my skincare moisturizer rather than this. They have 10 claims associated with this primer. It says that it's supposed to smooth, soften, extend makeup wear, hydrates, soothes, evens tones, minimizes texture, blurs lines, adds a soft focus finish, and keeps makeup fresh. And I feel like it only does one of those things, hydrates. <laughs> so I am going to be using it because I could use the extra moisture. My skin is suddenly very, very dry. I don't know what has changed. I feel like the weather is the same, my house temperature is the same. I don't know what happened, but something did. I don't wanna to add too much to my forehead because my forehead is, you know, adapting to the bang life and it's breaking out. So I'm just gonna not put so much product up there today. So we'll see if it does anything, but I feel like it's just nice and hydrating. So now for foundation, I actually have two options. So I have the Kosas Tinted Face Oil or the Tarte C Hydroflex Serum Foundation. And I think I'm just gonna give it up to whoever matches my skin more because I'm not very excited to go in with either, if I'm being honest. So let's give these both a good shake. It's been a while. They have the same consistency. So the Tarte one, I have no idea what shade I'm in. I, uh, the sticker's gone, so I don't know. I think it's five for some reason. I wanna say it's five, <laughs> but I'm just pulling that out of thin air. And I have the shade four in the Kosas one. Kosas looks deeper, I feel like. Looks a little yellow. And here's the Tarte one, which I think is gonna be the winner for today. What I remember about the Tarte one is that it applies really nicely. It looks good for a little while and then it completely separates from my face and looks like it's sitting on top. So I'm gonna take a little bit on my fingertips. I'm gonna really work it into my skin that way. So I'm gonna be a little bit of light. That's looking pretty mask-like. Feeling this texture, it feels very similar to the Fenty Beauty Ease Drops. Just a bit thinner in consistency. Oh no, look what I've done. It leaked in my finger crevices and it got all in my ring here. Grody. Yeah, it's a little bit pale. It's a little bit pale. I'm just gonna kind of go over and buff it in with this e.l.f. brush. This is the Putty Primer Applicator. I think initially going in with my fingers and warming that product up will give this a good shot. I'm not gonna go in with my beauty blender because I don't wanna add any hydration just in case if the serum is kind of oily in here or something. I'm just gonna even it out with this brush and get into the tinier areas where my fingers couldn't. This looks really, really nice um, against my skin right now. Like just texture wise, I'll bring you guys in a little closer so you can see what's happening. It just is settling nicely. I'm gonna keep an eye on it to see if that changes, but so far it looks good. Better than what I remember. So now for my concealer, I have the Armani Beauty Luminous Silk Concealer in the shade four. Now I don't really remember what I disliked about this product at all. I just remember, what do I remember? Do I remember anything? I don't think I do. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> and I'm going to give this concealer a good shot, so I'm actually going to be setting it with a powder I adore, which is going to be the Pat McGrath Blurring Under Eye Powder. I just wanna give everything a solid chance once again. So I'm going to start off with around that much, and I'm going to, mm, should I blend it out with my finger? Maybe a sponge is where it went wrong in the past. I'm gonna, start going in with my finger. I find this one surprising because I'm so in love with the Luminous Silk foundation. So 
so I don't really understand what could go wrong here. It might just have to be warmed up and pressed in instead of with a sponge. It feels exactly like the foundation. Okay, by doing this motion, I'm taking away the foundation I have right here from stamping in that area. It'd be more delicate. I'm just gonna go tap the edges with this brush to make sure everything's seamless. I just grabbed my Pat McGrath Blurring Under Eye Powder, this one right here, and I'm gonna set it with this Melt uh, Fluffy Brush. It looks nice right now. I don't see an issue at all. It's very blurring, and with this powder, it's even more blurring. I don't know, I feel like it looks good. I'll keep a close eye on it to see if things go sideways, but right now I'm not seeing what past me hated. For this next product, I completely forgot it existed. <laughs> it totally went out with the trash in my mind, got wiped clean. Um, but this is the Glossier Solar Paints. Completely forgot these existed. I remember these getting patchy quite quickly and the effect wasn't very exciting. So I'm gonna see how I feel on this day. So this is the lightest shade, Flare, which I think I'm going to be going in with today. I feel like that will suit my skin tone better than the shade Ray. Yeah, for sure. But, ooh, I don't know. I feel like I like the undertone of Ray a bit more. It looks more neutral. Let's see. Whereas this one looks kind of orange. No, I'm gonna go in with uh, Flare still. So application wise, I believe I used to swipe it on. I scooped some off on the back of my hand. I'm just gonna run my finger through it here and apply little dots. It stinks. <laughs> what does that smell like? I don't know if these have gone off while they've been sitting in my, in my closet. I don't know. They just don't smell very pleasant. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna start off with that much. Going to be using my Melt Cosmetics 777 brush, and I'm going to kind of pat these in place. You yeah, see, they kind of oh, dry quickly. I might have to do little circles to help that blend. It kind of looks like a blush, and it's very sticky. It sticks in one spot, and it's hard to blend. Which is weird because it doesn't feel like one of those formulas at all when I was feeling it on the back of my hand. I think I'm just gonna apply it like I did on this side. I'm not going to draw it on. I feel like I'm going to screw myself over by doing that. Yeah, this looks pinky on me, which is so strange because it looked so orangey yellow on my hand. I don't think this is going to be redeemed today. I just really wish that they came out with the cloud paints in bronzing colors. How fun would that be? It'd be a dream come true. Yeah, I still disappointed in this one. I just adjusted my camera setting, so I feel like you can see what I'm seeing better now. It's just really hard to work with. It looks very streaky and makeup-y, like it doesn't blend into my skin naturally. Oh no, I've really done it now. Oh, orange nose. Just gonna take a little bit of the serum foundation on my sponge here. Just gonna pat over that kind of underpaint or just erase it entirely. I'd be happy with that too. While I'm at it, I'm gonna put a little bit more coverage where it erased when I was tapping up my concealer. This is just not good. Yeah, it just looks really, really patchy. I'm gonna leave it for a second because maybe I irritated my skin I was as I was blending it out, but I highly doubt that because I use this brush a lot in the exact same technique, but it looks very red and blushy to me. Anyways, I feel like I was just repeating myself a lot there. So Glossier Solar Paint, no, no, bye-bye. So next up here for highlighter, this one truly broke my heart. This is the LYS Aim High Pressed Highlighter Powder. I have the shade Brave here, and I remember this came with the most promising and exciting description ever, but it was the complete opposite from its description. I just pulled it up on Sephora here, and yeah, it is very heartbreaking because it says that it's a multi-dimensional pearl pigment. It's a pressed powder that gives seamless boost of radiance without unwanted chunky glitter, and it won't accentuate texture or enlarged pores. It's super fine, talc-free, velvety pressed highlighter powder for luxuriously radiant looking skin. And that just sounds like everything I want in a highlighter and more, but you can just like tell by the looks of this highlighter in the pan, how texture enhancing it is, like you can just tell by looking at this, you know? And it's very glittery looking at it in the pan, and it's super, super thick, like it swatches just like an eyeshadow, 
that you can see it like a visible layer. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna be testing it out anyways. <laughs> so I'm gonna be taking my favorite highlighting brush, which is the Moda Pro Glow. I just dipped my brush so gently in here. I'm going to tap off a lot of it. And I'm going to apply it like all of my highlighters, of course. Is this brush wet? How's that possible? I'm gonna be switching my brushes to a different one. I don't know why that was wet. Anyways, I like to sweep my powder highlights on first in the general areas to kind of put the product on there. And then I like to wipe my brush and really go in and polish those pearls and just get a more natural highlighted area instead of just a streak. This way when you turn your head, you'll be able to see the highlight everywhere. It's also interesting, I'm looking at it here and I don't know if they're discontinuing it or if they're all out of stock, which I find to be weird, but they're all out of stock on Sephora. Okay, it's not as horrible as I remember, but it's still disappointing. Like when I look at my cheek here, I can see a lot of texture. I'll bring you guys in closer so you can potentially see the flakes of glitter everywhere. You know, it's just very texture enhancing, especially right here. I believe this is the lightest shade as well, and it's still a bit dark for my skin tone. You can see the undercast a touch. So this one will not be redeemed for me as well. I just wouldn't reach for this ever if it was in my collection. That is very disappointing to me because I have so many favorites from LYS already. Uh, yeah, but the highlighters fell really flat for me. I actually don't have a blush that I disliked, so I might just pick one that I like in my collection. But before I do so, I'm gonna be going in with some powder and I have the Huda Beauty Glowish Powder. I'm going to be using the shade 01 Fair. So this is a luminous pressed powder. I forget if this was supposed to be like a powder foundation. I'm gonna quickly check on that on Sephora. Oh, so I think, I think it is like a pressed powder foundation. It says a smoothing and blurring luminous pressed powder that gives you coverage without the cake with buildable lightweight formula. I'm just gonna be using it as a normal setting powder though. So I'm going to use this uh, Royal and Lingnickel Balm 125 brush, which I use all the time to set my face. Bring you guys in closer. I'm gonna start off on my forehead. I'm just gonna set the areas I usually do. Okay, yeah, I can see that this one is a foundation. I should have kept a darker shade because this one is definitely adding coverage. So my bad on this one. So I'm just gonna use the sheerest amount to set the center of my face. I'm already here. I'll just cover it with blush. <laughs> it's not doing the effect I remember it doing. I remember specifically saying that it made my skin texture look like a golf ball and I'm not getting golf ball vibes from my cheeks today. I actually see the blurring qualities when I use the tiniest, tiniest amount right here. But I still don't think I would ever really reach for this one. It does not come close to Mycosis Cloud Set or the LYS Triple Fix Setting Powder, Charlotte Tilbury one. Like I just, I wouldn't reach for this one. But I just wanna do a little checkup. Let's see how my under eyes are looking. Okay, they don't look horrible. Um, it is settling into my fine lines here even though I set it with my favorite powder. You can't see it when I'm looking straight or anything like that, only when I like unfold my folds. That's disgusting. And it doesn't look bad at all. Like I feel like I would use this concealer time to time. Is it my favorite? No, but it's not bad. For the foundation, I'm trying to look in the areas where I didn't apply anything else on top. So right here around my jaw, I feel like it's looking quite nice and it hasn't separated from my face at all yet. It's looking nice, just a bit light for my skin tone. So products that have been sort of redeemed so far, the concealer and the Tarte. Hydro, whatever, what is it called? Hydro, Hydroflex Serum Foundation. Everything else I don't really see myself using. So now I'm going to prime my eyes with the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Eye Primer. I had such high hopes for this eye primer because I love the two other products in this line from Milk, but this one feels very silicone-y or something. So it doesn't really set or create a waxy barrier for my oily eyelids. So using this eye primer, I would always get creasing and I wouldn't get like what I needed from my eye primer. It does enhance eyeshadows for sure because they really stick down to that more tacky silicone base, but that's about it. It doesn't help in longevity or anything you really go for when you're using an eye primer. I don't have any brow products 
and my dislikes here so I'm just going to quickly do that off camera so while I'm doing that please enjoy the brow intermission you guys I just looked at myself as a hole in my mirror and I feel like I'm starting to look ill <laughs> because the base was so pale and this powder here was so pale and I think it's adding shine to my face. Is this glowy? I guess it said luminous powder. So yeah, it totally has a lot of um, like fine, fine pearls in here. So I'm just looking sweaty and sick. <laughs> nice. I think I'm going to go to my makeup fixer and just add a layer of that. I feel like I need a redemption arc here. I'm going to use some of my Kosas cloud set. This usually fixes things. Just gonna use a light layer of that in the center of my face because holy heck, she's not cute. Okay, that helped like a little bit. Not much though. Thank God I have bangs because my forehead is the worst. <laughs> it's looking the worst. And my eyes are creasing horribly already. Anyways, so now for my eyeshadow, I am going to be using another milk product and these are the color chalks. So I do like the concept or the thought behind these products here, but I think what makes me dislike them is they're not really easy to use. I feel like they tried to do something environmentally friendly, but then they stuck it into this little plastic tube. I wish they like made the outer tube something like the Melt Stack here, which is all made of paper, or similarly to the Tarte tinted lip balms that they used to have. I'm sure they still have them, but they were in cardboard as well. I think that would have taken this vision a lot further. I just think it's kind of pointless when you shove it into a plastic tube. It may be recycled plastic, who knows, but I still feel like it defeats the thought, you know? And these are also really hard to work with because of the size of them. I feel like it's kind of awkward to rub all over your eye, but the effect of some of them is really pretty. I do find them to be a bit dry but some of them have a really pretty glow. Like this one right here is really pretty. This is the shade Dodgeball. I don't know what color I'm going to be going in with today. I think the last time I used them, I used Kickball and this orange shade Jump. So I'm gonna put those to the side. I wanna give something else a shot. I'm kinda eyeing this silver and this pink that I swatched. Maybe if I do a little fading situation, that might be cool if I start with like the silver and then go in with the pink. And I might be able to deepen it up with this darker one. I'm gonna give it a shot. I feel like I'm gonna do something fun with that. I feel like these would have been more successful if they were in like a wooden packaging or something you can sharpen. Cause this is just kind of awkward. And you can also use these as highlighters, but I don't really know if anyone does that. I have to do a unique angle to be able to see what I'm doing here. Okay, kickball on my eyes doesn't have too much payoff. Now I'm going to be going in with freeze, which is the silver. Okay, there's a bit more payoff now. Yeah, it feels like I'm literally rubbing dry chalk on my eyeball. Okay, I'm gonna just go over everything with the silver because I'm getting a little bit more reflect that way. I'm gonna try to rub it with my finger. Okay, maybe that helps. Yeah, I see why I dislike these. There's just like a lot of effort for what? I'm just gonna rub this dark shade, trampoline. <laughs> it's a funny name for some reason. Onto my eye here to add some definition. I'm just gonna blend it out with this brush. I just caught a glimpse of my concealer and it's starting to look ugly right where it never looks ugly, like right there. Do you see what I'm seeing? I'm just gonna clean it up with my sponge. Oh God. I'm really starting to see why I dislike these products. <laughs> I'm going to rub this silver on the remainder of my lower lash line to hopefully cover what the concealer has done to my under eyes, which is sinful. Okay, I'm just gonna do this eye real quick and I'll be right back. I was just doing some horrific faces to get this to go on my eyeballs. Okay, I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, I learned how to get a little bit more payoff. What happens is that it kind of absorbs the moisture when you're applying it this way. So you have to like draw it on your towel, like actual chalk to remove where it kind of got oily <laughs> or got moisture on it and then you get better payoff. But it only lasts a couple swipes before you have to swipe it again on a towel. But I, that's what I learned. Yeah, way better pigmentation. But this takes way, way, way too much time for what you get. Like I just looked at how much time 
it took me to achieve this and it took me over 10 minutes. I know I was talking, but still, it took me a long time to get this and this doesn't look good. <laughs> I still don't recommend these. I still don't really get the point of these. These are for sure not going to be lasting products in my collection. Um, I wouldn't recommend them. So here are the finished eyes. I'm just gonna quickly apply some mascara. I don't have any that I disliked here. So I'll just quickly do that off camera and I'll be right back. Oh my God. I'm like throwing off the white balance of my camera. I look for real dead <laughs> or very ill now that I put like this gray on my eyes. Very vampire meets zombie. But anyways, here are the eyes all done. I used the Essence Lash Princess Mascara. I was hoping it was going to build enough volume that you couldn't see um, how inconsistent the shine is on my eyes. <laughs> but, you know, it did what it had to do. <laughs> so now let's move on to my lips. So I'm first going to line my lips. Whoa! I think that happened before on camera. But this is the ColourPop So Happy Lip Liner. This is actually one of my favorite lip liners. Um, I didn't have anything I disliked in that department, so I'm just gonna contour my lips with this. I feel like this is looking so much warmer than it usually does. <laughs> this is hilarious. I hope you guys are enjoying this video. I'm kind of feeling unsure about the results so far. <laughs> like, is this gonna be uploaded? I don't know, it's, it could be a funny laugh. Love this lip liner color, it's so pretty. The only thing though is that ColourPop rudely discontinued it alongside all my other favorite things from ColourPop. It's so sad. And finally for my lips, I'm going to be using one of these shades from Incredible. These are the lacquer lip tints. Here I have Fruity Feels and Slow Jams. Slow Jams is the deeper one. The thing I didn't like about these, they feel very similar to the M Cosmetics lip cushions, but they're so much more thick and they apply such a thick like layer to your lips that it's uncomfortable and sticky. They look gorgeous, like look how pretty and glossy that is, but if you could see there's like a huge, not huge, but it's like a visible level up layer on my hand here. I think we're gonna be using the lighter shade. I'm just gonna add a touch of this. I'm gonna try to add one swipe and I'm gonna dab it out to blend it. The thing is though, it feels nice when you rub your lips together, but it's like so tacky and sticky. It feels like glue on your lips. I have three formulas to recommend over these ones. These are much better and they're a very similar formula. You just don't get as thick coverage, but you get the same amount of shine and same idea. So these are the Wet n Wild High Shine Brilliance Mega Last Lipsticks. These ones are phenomenal. I, my, one of my favorite shades is Bellini Overflow. It's definitely sheerer, but way more comfortable and you still get a lot of shine. Bellini Overflow and Clothes Off are my favorite two from the Wet n Wild lineup. They're much, much better and they feel a lot higher in quality. And it's nice because you're able to scroll these ones up and down, whereas this one is like a, like once you scroll it up, you're like kind of locked in and it can smudge on the cap here. Another formula that's very similar is the Charlotte Tilbury, these ones. I'll link them down below. I don't, they don't have their names on it. This is the shade Sexy Lips though. This one is a huge favorite of mine, but it's the same idea. It's kind of like that balmy gloss stick. It's gorgeous, it's right there. Love, love, love this formula. And of course, like I mentioned a couple times now, the M Cosmetics lip cushions. I love all of the shades in the lip cushions, even the, the balm. But this one is a thinner formula and you get pretty much the exact same la- oh god. I just smooshed that way too excitingly. So here's an M Cosmetics one. So you can see it's on the same shine level as the Incredible ones, but these ones are a lot more slippy and comfortable to wear compared to the Incredible ones. Okay, hopefully that made sense. I feel like I went on a little rant. But I guess here is the finished makeup look. What do we think? <laughs> I can't believe how metallic my forehead is. This is when we call in the bangs. That's better, it breaks up the shine a little bit. But here is the finished final look. I don't know if any of the products were really redeemed for me today. I guess the only product that I was pleasantly surprised by today was the Tarte C Hydroflex uh, foundation. But will I be using it? Probably not, it definitely is too light for me and it's not something I see myself picking up a new shade in, you know? So surprisingly in this video, there's no products that were redeemed. I feel kind of sad, 
but I hope you guys enjoyed today's video anyways. I hope you had a couple giggles here and there watching me struggle and hate my makeup today. <laughs> but I'm going to call it quits here. That is all for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give it a like. It would help me out so very much. I will be linking the products I actually liked that I used in today's video in the description down below. So feel free to check that out and I'll see you in the next one. Love you, bye.